Five million years ago, in the wide open savanna of Africa, life was both beautiful and dangerous. The sun was hot, the air dry, and the tall golden grass moved like waves in the wind. Scattered trees gave little shade, and animals roamed freely. Zebras, antelopes, elephants, and predators always on the hunt. This was the world of the first hominids, the early ancestors of human beings. Every day was a fight to survive. Food was never certain, water was sometimes far away, and predators were always close. But within the struggle, there was something even more important happening. The beginning of human life through birth. For a female hominid, pregnancy was both a blessing and a danger. Her belly grew heavy, slowing her down, making her vulnerable to lions, leopards, and hyenas. Every step she took carried risk. Her troop moved across the land in search of food, but she could not keep up easily. Still, she walked because there was no choice. The continuation of her kind depended on the life growing inside her. As the months passed, her body changed. Her back ached from the weight. Her feet swelled in the heat. Walking became harder each day, but stopping meant death. Before we continue this video, don't forget to subscribe and comment below which country you are watching from. The other females in her group watched her carefully. Some had given birth before and knew what was coming. Others were young and had never seen the process. They stayed close when they could, sharing food when it was available, helping her keep pace with the group. But they also knew that when her time came, she would have to face it mostly alone. This was the way of their world. Birth was a private battle between a mother and nature. When labor began, she felt the deep pains tightening inside her body. Unlike today, there were no safe beds, no clean rooms, no doctors or midwives with tools. Only instinct guided her. She moved away from the group, searching for a hidden place where she could squat low and give birth. Sometimes she hid under a tree, other times in tall grass or between rocks. She needed to be out of sight because the sounds of birth... The heavy breathing, the cries of pain, and later the smell of blood could attract predators. A single roar in the distance reminded her that danger was always close. The contractions grew stronger. She crouched, pressing her hands to the earth, her body shaking as the waves of pain came and went. Sweat ran down her face despite the cool morning air. She tried not to cry too loudly, biting her lips, because any sound could reveal her location. Unlike modern humans, her posture was squatting, using gravity to help her. It was raw, natural, and full of struggle. Her knuckles were white as she gripped the ground, and her breathing came in short, sharp bursts. Hours passed like this. The sun moved across the sky, casting different shadows around her hiding place. The pain would build, peak, and then fade, only to return stronger than before. Between contractions, she listened carefully to every sound. The rustle of grass that might hide a predator, the distant calls of her troop, the buzzing of flies that would soon be drawn to the scent of birth. Her eyes darted constantly, even as her body demanded all her attention. The babies had began to appear. In these times, the birth canal was not as tight as in modern women, because the skulls of early hominids were smaller. This made birth somewhat less complicated, but it was still filled with danger. Many mothers did not survive, and many babies did not live past their first days. But in this moment, her body pushed with all its strength. Her hands dug into the dirt, her teeth clenched, and with one last effort, the child slipped into the world. The final push tore through her like lightning, and then suddenly, there was silence. The cry of new life echoed softly. The baby was wet tiny and fragile. Its first breaths were shaky, but they were real. The mother lifted it with trembling hands, pressing it close to her chest. For a moment, exhaustion covered her body like a heavy blanket, but her eyes showed fierce protection. In this harsh land, this small baby was both a hope and a risk. She quickly bit through the cord, 
tasting the metallic blood, and cleaned the baby with soft grass and leaves she had gathered. The baby's skin was slippery and warm against her chest. She brought the child to her breast, and the baby began to nurse, its tiny mouth pulling the first drops of milk, the only food that could keep it alive. The suckling was weak at first, but grew stronger. This milk was precious. It carried not just nutrition, but antibodies that would help the baby survive the countless diseases and infections that waited in their world. She felt the baby's small fingers curl around her finger, such a tiny grip, but already so determined to hold on to life. She could not stay hidden for long. The smell of blood carried in the air, mixing with the scent of the grass and earth. A lion nearby raised its head, catching the scent and padding closer to investigate. Hyenas laughed in the distance, their calls growing nearer. Vultures circled high overhead, their keen eyes watching for any sign of weakness or death. She knew she had to move, even though her body was weak and shaking from a birth. Every muscle ached, and standing up felt like an impossible task. Holding her newborn tight against her chest, she slowly made her way back to the troop, watching every shadow in the grass, listening to every sound. Each step was agony. Her legs wobbled, and she had to stop frequently to catch her breath. The baby sensed her tension and remained quiet, as if it already understood that silence meant survival. She moved from tree to tree, using them for support and cover, always checking the horizon for movement. Sometimes, she was not alone during birth. Other females in the troop might have followed her quietly, standing nearby during the labor. They did not have the knowledge of modern midwives, but they could guard her, watch for predators, and even comfort her by staying close. If danger appeared, they could throw stones or scream to distract predators while she tried to escape with her newborn. This simple act of cooperation was one of the first signs of human care, the beginning of community and survival together. These helpers risked their own lives to protect a mother and child, showing that even in the harshest times, compassion existed. When she returned to the troop, the others gathered around with mixed reactions. They looked at the newborn with curiosity, sniffing, touching gently, and even trying to hold it. Some were gentle, cooing softly and stroking the baby's tiny head. Others were cautious, keeping their distance until they were sure the baby was healthy. A baby meant more mouths to feed, and in times of hunger, not every member of the group welcomed new life. Resources were always scarce, and another individual meant less food for everyone else. But for the mother, nothing mattered more than protecting her child. She held it close, feeding it whenever it cried, and sleeping with it pressed against her body for warmth during the cold nights. The baby needed constant care. It could not regulate its own temperature, could not move away from danger, could not even hold up its own head. Everything depended on its mother's vigilance and strength. The dangers were endless. If the mother became too weak from blood loss or infection, she risked being left behind when the troop moved on. If the baby cried too much during the day, predators could track the sound and attack the entire group. If there was not enough food, the child might starve before it could eat solid food. Disease could strike at any moment. Infections that would be minor today could be fatal in that world. The baby's immune system was still developing, and every new germ was a potential killer. Weather posed another constant threat. If rains came, they brought both relief from the heat and the danger of flooding. The baby could die from getting too cold and wet. During droughts, finding water became desperate. The mother had to drink enough to produce milk, but water sources were often far apart and guarded by dangerous animals. Sometimes the choice was between risking death at a watering hole or watching her baby slowly weaken from thirst. Other members of the troop were not always allies. Sometimes when food was scarce, there was competition even within the group. A baby that cried too much might be seen as a liability. In extreme cases, if the group faced starvation, tough decisions had to be made about who would survive. Mothers had to be constantly alert, not just external threats, but to tensions within their own community. But despite these risks, life continued. Enough mothers survived the dangers of birth and the challenges that followed. Enough babies grew strong enough to walk, to eat solid food, to eventually have children of their own. Little by little, the line of humanity moved forward. 
Each successful birth was a victory against overwhelming odds. Each child that lived to adulthood carried forward the genetic traits and survival knowledge that would help the species adapt and grow. The act of giving birth five million years ago was both terrifying and miraculous. It was done with no tools except what nature provided, no fire to keep predators away, and no shelter except what could be found in the landscape. It was done in silence when possible, in fear always, and in pain that had to be endured without relief. But it was also done with courage that came from deep instinct, with determination that refused to accept defeat, and with a love that was already forming between mother and child before the baby even took its first breath. Each birth was a fight against death, but also a declaration that life would continue. Each cry of a newborn was proof that the species would not give up, no matter how harsh the world became. The mothers of that time faced challenges that would break many people today. Yet they persevered because the alternative was extinction. They had no choice but to be strong, to be brave, to endure whatever came. Generation after generation, mothers squatted on the earth under the vast African sky, brought new life into the world, and walked back into the dangerous savanna with their fragile children pressed close. Some survived these ordeals, growing stronger and wiser. Some did not, becoming part of the harsh mathematics of natural selection. But those who lived carried the story forward, along with the genes and knowledge that would help their descendants face new challenges. The successful mothers learned and adapted. They learned which plants could ease pain, which hiding spots were safest for birth, how to read the signs that labor was beginning. They passed this knowledge to their daughters, creating the first informal traditions of childbirth care. They learned to help each other when possible, forming bonds that made the group stronger. They learn when to take risks and when to hide, when to keep moving and when to rest. As time passed and their descendants evolved, birth became somewhat easier. Brains grew larger, making birth more difficult. But communities became stronger, making survival more likely. Tools were invented to help with cutting cords and cleaning babies. Fire was discovered, providing warmth and protection. Language developed, allowing mothers to share knowledge more precisely. But the basic courage and determination required for birth remain the same. Across millions of years, through countless changes and adaptations, that original courage carried forward until finally we arrived here. Every person alive today carries the genetic memory of those mothers who refused to surrender, who gave birth under the eyes of predators, who cradled their babies with arms that shook from exhaustion and fear, and who walked back into the wild, absolutely determined to live and to help their children live as well. The story of birth among early hominids is not just ancient history. It is a foundation of human existence and the source of our deepest strengths. It tells us about pain that can be endured, about survival instincts that run deeper than conscious thought, and about courage that emerges when everything depends on it. It shows that life was never guaranteed, never easy, never safe, but was always fought for with everything these early mothers had to give. And because they fought, because they endured whatever came, because they chose life over and over again in the face of impossible odds, we are here today, able to tell their story and honor their memory. We are the descendants of the survivors, the children of mothers who would not give up, no matter what the world threw at them.